Hi everyone, we're gonna go over the recommendations video. This is Tanvi and Nick, and we're gonna just go over the slides and some tips for you. Um, so what what are recommendations? Recommendations are basically um, you see them like every day uh, in e-commerce websites or uh, maybe like YouTube. Anywhere you go these days, if you search for a product. Uh, you start getting recommendations based on your search history or your purchase history and that's something that we're going to work on through this assignment because it's going to help you guys figure out how each of these day-to-day -day appliances actually give you what you would like to see. So now we're going to demonstrate the GUI or GUI. So basically when we choose something from the list, doesn't matter what item, it's going to return a list of recommendations and we're going to go over how this list of recommendations works later on and you'll notice that with different items list changes so the data set used so basically for recommendations we're using a reduced portion of the UCI machine learning repository uh, mostly because otherwise it would be a fair bit to go through uh, the data info, so for every row in the data set, it represents a single customer. Uh, customer doesn't necessarily have to be unique. Uh, every column does, though, re represent a unique item for sale by each retailer. And every value where the customer crosses with the item represents the quantity or amount of each item purchased by a particular customer. So basically our program, we're going to use the data set to recommend additional items for when we get a new customer who's looking at something in our list. Um, doesn't really matter what, it's going to return something specific to that item. So these recommendations are going to be based on the correlation between previous customers who have purchased this item and purchased other additional items at a higher correlation. So that kind of means like purchase together. Uh, and kind of give them what we think they would like based on their current choice. So objective one is standard deviation. So first off, you're going to be implementing the standard deviation method. Uh, refer to the handout for the specifics. It's going to compute a sample standard deviation of a specific property of a list of elements. And then sample standard deviation, basically it's used to get the variation of data within a set. So you've seen like a normal line where all the data points come up, or if you've been talking about how things get curved in other courses, that kind of idea too. This term is a normal spread of specific points from the mean of the data, so the bell curve. So your function is basically going to extract a property from each of the data set and return the sample standard deviation specific to this property. Objective two is correlation. So basically you impl implement the correlation method to compute the sample correlation between two properties of a list of elements. So I'm gonna go over what sample correlation is. So basically this refers to how close two things, whatever those things are, to each other. Um, I think one of the examples that was given in the Wikipedia is like using, calculating electricity based on gas and water usage. So this is computed with the Pearson correlation value. Uh, Pearson correlation value just basically goes to p-value, that's the short form of it. We're only interested for this assignment, or basically for this objective and the main objective, in positive correlations between two items referred to as their p-value. So p-values range from negative one to one, and we're really only worried about the positives. Correlations can be used to determine how likely one variable will affect another variable, like for example, like we said with the um, electricity compared to gas and water usage. And, they, and the closer a p-value is to 1, the closer to 100% the events are correlated or basically likely to happen. Um, now, by now you've already found standard deviation and correlations. Now we're moving on to the popular KNN algorithm, which is the K nearest neighbors algorithm. Um, we're going to sort the list, sort the, <laughs> sort the recommendations um, according to most correlated to least correlated with the head being the top correlation for a specific product and that list is going to be returned as the top key correlated products from your function um, if you've made 
made it this far congratulations this is awesome um, if you have all of your functions defined well defined you have your primary objective um, with the expansion objective we actually want you to use your correlation software to find attributes that are most correlated to a student's success um, you, you have um, a data set that's given to you which you're supposed to um, process and we're really interested in the positive correlations for the the rest of the assignment but in this case we're we're going to see your positive and negative correlations um, and include your submission in a text file and submit the results have fun and let's see what you find so just some tips uh, it's going to be very helpful if you read through the additional material regarding how the different functions work uh, especially the Wikipedia pages it's really going to help you especially in the long run when you're trying to figure out why something's not working also, make sure you are using the correct mathematical formulas for each of your functions so you don't carry through computation errors. Each of the functions is a little bit different in how they do things, so that could carry through in the long run. And finally, just make sure you're running all your tests when you're using the correct data, so you don't get something wrong when it actually would be correct based on your code. Alright everyone, have fun and good luck!